Something you often just mess with I remember being old by myself Just walking, reflecting on how you left me Now you say we should be talking and texting again What changed then? It's a strange thing How you coming back to get that love I had once caged in for you only Only for you to come and throw it back at me But you would never want to get back with me If you knew the hate I packed with me I gave you my all and then you walked away couldn't believe it, so I stalked your day in and out. Checked your Facebook, I'd stay on your Twitter. So a lot of subtweets from you that hurt me and made me bitter. But guess what? Time flies and wounds heal. Sucks cause you never know how having me is your groom feels. You left me at a time when all I needed was you. You thought the other guy was better till he cheated on you. Now I'm in a happy place and I'm over you. We ain't ever getting back, so march on like soldiers do. Now you ask your girls to come talk for you, and I'm staring at them like fools, like, uh, so what am I supposed to do? No nice words for you and your company. All you get is a high five on a palm from me. You wasting time trying to talk to me. I bought the dish, I'm staring at you, DMX, and like, what all you put they want from me? I switched up. Once was broken, now I'm all fixed up. Closed chapter, so I hope that shuts all of you tricks up. All of this was your doing, trying to be all sweet, spooning with two different men. You created this whole mix up. That's what you get for leaving me there. Why it seem like I don't care? It's cause I was teased, displeased, seized on my knees, broken to pieces. Girl, I've been to hell and you're the reason I was there. So I wish you well. Now you know how I felt. Honestly, I don't see how I can help. So, try something I got else. a new boyfriend, but there's a thing for you. How am I supposed to move on with the things you do? It's like you never let go and I never let go. I think I'm in love. 95 and 9 touch of film thugger thugger it's actually called thugger featuring diva and 3c the title of the song is turntable playing for you at about seven minutes past the hour of 7 p.m and uh i think i've finally got in your attention yuri yes that one that one caught you that did that song get you like did it in some way resonate with you in a way yes in in, in some way nice voice that's that's all that's all huh? we're getting <laughs> I'm sorry. Good evening, <laughs> friends. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the TFM Hip Hop Show, and in the house with me is Yuri. I, and Yuri, you, you, I know we have we we we've just never been over this how to pronounce your last name properly. I, I said it earlier, and I think I said it in a French accent. <laughs> Gregorians. See, I said it in the right. I accent. can make it easy. Uh, Old Grumpy Muzungu. Old Grumpy Muzungu. <laughs> 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 He's the poet that I've been talking to you about. That. S- just doesn't like hip hop. He says the only hip hop he likes is uh, by whom? You said uh, by Enigma. N- I have two uh, artists that I like to hear. Uh-huh. I even uh, have my favorite uh, uh, tunes or, or pieces that uh-huh. I like from them. It's I am Enigma and Keith Kaire, okay. Ugandans. So, well, that's a plus for us. I think. I mean, your favorite. Uh, a rap act uh, Ugandan and I'm always here on air trying to push Ugandan hip hop and well I don't think you heard their music from me but <laughs> <laughs> no um, well generally uh, it was because I am genuinely interested in, in Ugandan talents in Ugandan artists in a broad meaning of that word uh-huh. and uh, I met personally those two individuals and I always appreciate when people have some uh, certain beliefs, philosophy, and, and they give you the story, even if it's the story maybe of the dream or just a joke, I still make a lot of sense. Uh, their story uh, mm-hmm. there makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, and I appreciate their, I would say, elegant lyrics mm-hmm. <coughs> even within uh, some sort of rough uh, style the requirement of hip hop or rap mm-hmm. they still breathe elegance mm-hmm. uh, beauty these are beautiful mm-hmm. th- uh, things again they don't break any 
any uh, limitation of the gender, but they still go a little beyond what the frames. That's usually that's what happens with gray artists. Okay. They always go beyond the the, the limits of the gender. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I can't argue with that. I can't disagree because at least uh, when I'm not presenting, I have worked with these uh, two artists that your favorite, Enigma and Kimo, uh, did some music with them. So I'm I'm good. They they in my good books, so <laughs> <laughs> it's safe. But Yuri, uh, welcome to Uganda. Thank you. First and foremost, and. Uh, we could quickly just jump into, for instance, uh, you're a poet. Mm, yes. yes. Spoken word <laughs> artist. Yes. Uh, there's, there's, there's said to be a difference between poets and spoken word artists, and it's uh, not usually just the same thing. Mm, uh, yes, if you're talking about mm -hmm. uh, a written word and spoken word, mm -hmm. um, it could be very well within the same person. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just have to understand as anyone who tries to rhyme being a poet it's just simple you when you come out with your poetry mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand the difference because I write sometimes poems that it they it's really hard to understand them unless you are reading and you are not interrupted by the voice this and that sound effects there are some poems that bring like open bright messages mm -hmm. um, well the bright example the same hip hop it's mostly about lyrics yes so you bring plain and and bright images that hit your uh, brain mm -hmm. easily Mm -hmm. so that people can quickly relate it's not anything complicated uh -huh. yet it still can have depth so so somewhere in there you're picking on the relationship between poetry and hip-hop somewhere in there it's obvious okay then uh, even th I am uh, influenced where you gonna go from this hip-hop you cannot run away Okay. It's everywhere. Uh, yeah, that's so that. Even uh, I am influenced. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying as to much as I don't like we're, it. We're, we're, we're going to, we're going to attempt to, like, make you like it, one way or another. Uh, there's actually a question uh, from one of your friends, uh, Dennis Asimwe, uh, that I'm going to get to a little later. But for now, I think I'd like to share with uh, the listeners a bit of your poetry. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, this one is uh, uh, off your <laughs> audio book your audio book your audio poetry uh, yeah. catalog and uh the, the 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 title of this is the title of your audio book uh, could you share it with us please because yes. at least uh, <laughs> i know they're going to wonder like what the hell uh-huh uh, the title of this uh, it's actually a first cd mm -hmm. that i tried to record in a studio you didn't try you executed and finally did it and released sorry it, so. i did uh -huh. um it's love hip-hop and tchaikovsky um uh, kind of contradicting the same eclectic uh, mixture even in the name I, I hope they got it just, just just we'll get to the contradiction within the title but the title is love hip-hop and Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. This track, th this poem that I'm getting into from there is called Son of a Turtle. Keep it right here on 95 and 9 Touch FM. Listen to Yuri Grigoyans, the grumpy old Muzungu. I had always heard that turtles are mute, that they never make sounds unless they are going underwater. All you hear then is blue. Bloop, bloop. But I once heard a turtle's voice. It came as a result of its ultimate release. I was a little kid when I saw this. Two of my friends had read somewhere that turtles jump out of their shells if you put them in boiling water. Just imagine what happened. Just guess. A cruel game, but they played it. I saw it with my own eyes. They threw the turtle into boiling water. The turtle turned its head and looked at me. Its eyes expanded out of pain. Before jumping out of its shell, the turtle made a soft, tender moan. 
I burned my hands trying to pull the turtle out of the boiling water, but I was too late. The turtle was free from the shell, naked, defenseless, and dead. I will never forget its soft moan, which lasted but a second. That's how my poetry was born. The only difference being my boiling water is love. All right. Okay. Son of a turtle. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. that one. That one. Uh, I remember uh, when I was listening to it. It got me at the end. That's what, like, when I'm like, you capture you 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 paint the scene, and I think with the vi with the sound effects and all that, it 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 becomes very visual and painful in a way. You're like the poor turtle, helpless, boiling water, and that's the only time it makes a sound and makes a noise. And when you get to the point of that's why. I write so I'm like okay plot twist and now I see it you can't hold it in any longer and you go into that point where it's too much you just have to let it out is that kind of what you were going for yes uh, well skipping any juicy details of my life but it was <laughs> actually uh, yes it was uh, at some point uh, I was so overwhelmed with my thoughts and feelings um, I used to write before then I took a long break but it was in Russian that was when out of certain pain inner okay. pain I just crossed over that border between two languages um, and since I was busy with expressing myself it kind of appeared seamless uh, after only two or three poems whoa I'm writing in English which is another thing uh, I, I I wanted to get into. Like, you actually speak very fluent English, and your writing in English is, dare I say, damn near impeccable. And uh, well, yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, and and uh, uh, from what I've seen, uh, like on your Facebook and whatnot, your Luganda as well is, it, yeah. it, it, it could rival some, could <laughs> rival my own. Like, <laughs> and I've lived here. <laughs> No, it's just a few lines I pick up quickly. I'm a quick learner. You're a quick But learner. that uh, created some kind of horror. Mm -hmm. Some people even thought seriously that I'm a Ugandan, um, you know, uh, acting like like he's white from the U.S. or whatever. Um, it, it's funny, but um, speaking of English, uh, it probably comes from my father. He developed mm -hmm. the love for foreign languages though when i came to the u.s 17 years ago i didn't speak at all I, I even joke sometimes when i arrived to the u.s i didn't know anything about the u.s except land uh, of the free uh, american express coca-cola and marilyn monroe that's it okay. <laughs> <laughs> you knew how to get the delivery to you you knew about the girls you know about your drink fair enough mm. <laughs> mm. fair enough but now that you are here in kampala you have been have you been inspired uh, by uh, Kampala in itself like you said you've been inspired to learn the language but I mean to feature some of Kampala uh, and Uganda into your work yeah um, actually after my first visit uh, exactly last year beginning of January 2015 mm -hmm. that was my first visit it's actually about a year ago now. yes because nobody believed it, they thought it was just empty thread. That I'm you'd coming. Be here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then it was like sort of, damn, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I have one poem that I shared at the last gathering. Uh, yes. And um, uh, I you, like. Would you, would, I, you, would you care to share it with us here? Oh, yeah. I, I'm okay. gladly All right, okay. sharing this. All right. Let um, me uh, get the distractions out the way and just let you get into your zone. Um, the City of Red Dust I once heard the legend of the City of Red Dust. I told to myself I must see how both the sun and the sweat on my wrinkled by troubles forehead slowly turn from their original colors into the color of dried blood, semi-brown and semi-red. 
They say my city is situated on the seven hills like Rome. Those hills are perky. They are covered by trees, plants so fresh and green like breasts of the queen are covered by jewelry for the wedding that is about to begin. I walk on the road. Cars are passing me by. Motorcycles growl my name. Zungu. I am finally here. I see the building across the street. There lives a beautiful woman who has become, even before we met, my every heartbeat. I see children waving their hands at me, yelling something jazzy. Jaja, jaja, sounds like Madhya Pradesh Maharaja. The whole street is shining like my love's eyes. I hear laughter. I see strange clothing, along with jackets and ties. How's your love life? Ask me the poster on the pole. How nice of you, the red dust city, to ask me that, to offer the garland of your smiles and your soul. I know I will be back. I will shower myself in red dust like a powerful elephant and will trumpet to the entire world. Come see my city of the red dust and only then die if you must. <laughs> I uh, like that bit where you say that, that, that the, sign, the signpost asks how... how <laughs> yeah, I found it so amusing. I even <laughs> took pictures. That's so delicate, tender. <laughs> well, that does, again, with the visual cues, You, if anyone in Kampala can see and even hear some of the sounds, the, how you point out the, the Mzungu. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people calling you that, I'm sure. I, uh, That's okay. And actually... Mm, um, I found out that uh, uh, native African languages, they, they, uh, like, they are not offensive at all. No, no, no. That's why you get guys have to use F word and this word, because you just don't have it in your vocabulary. Be proud of it. <laughs> and Muzungu doesn't sound offensive. Yeah, I understand it could be in some context, but it's really hard to imagine that somebody would say Muzungu in an offensive way. Mm -hmm. And as I found out, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. Muzungu basically doesn't mean something offensive. It means something uh, sort of like nomad, like uh, traveler, wanderer, exactly. something that is not usual for the, the for the place. Foreigner, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of. Yeah. You know. Mm. Some interesting traveler. Yes, you know that's 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 accurate actually. A and yes. it's humorous, and uh, I consider Uganda is the most humorous country probably. I b haven't been in any other countries, but as of now, the most you haven't been. Even Trevor Noah, that he's invited for the Daily Show in the U.S. Mm -hmm. In his team, two riders are Ugandans. Yes, very <laughs> proud, very <So> proud. <laughs> we are <laughs> very proud we are of that accomplishment, but. This this piece uh, you were telling me earlier b b before we came on air about how this came to you and it was like a spur of the moment kind of thing. Uh, basically, the first uh, uh, thoughts or a few lines uh, mm -hmm. that image city of red dust. It came actually. I really was walking on Chiwatuli Road, mm -hmm. and the building is still there, uh -huh. and she's still there. <laughs> So, it started to come in me like, I don't know, out of practically nowhere. There are different ways that I'm open to any type of inspiration, if, whether it comes right now or it comes after sitting several hours with a blank page and scratching your head, and then it comes again. But it was like, uh, I didn't finish it in Uganda. I actually finished it when I arrived back to the U.S., mm -hmm. But it was like uh, some sort of that I call uh, Kampala hangover or Uganda hangover. Okay. Well, when you are so don't want to leave and then when you come there, you're upset, down and that's hangover, a, that's literally. A, that, that's a nice way to put it, like <laughs> Kampala hangover. <laughs> I, I think I can, I can relate with that. Like I can relate with that. Not like a, a few times that I've traveled, not that I'm as traveled as you are, but I, I, I would guess. But I think I... I that that feeling of longing and memory of like where you've been and how you how where you are now is not like the comfort that you've been in. Yeah, before. now you have to go back to work, bills and this and that. <laughs> it's like when you get back from vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's always pleasant. Although I have various plans and it's not exactly just vacation. Just mm -hmm. you know, 
but still it, it feels like for me it's already second year it's for me like to replenish my energy mm-hmm. back to the all right then you know what let's get into another song that mm-hmm. i want to play uh you know the artist eminem yes you probably have heard of the name yes uh, i'm going to play you one of his songs that i hope may, in some way again uh, yeah i see you shaking your head you we're going to try we're going to insist until we have something else. i'm telling enigma <laughs> on you <laughs> <laughs> and after this we're going to short break and then we'll come back and hear what more it is that you're hoping to do other than vacation in kampala like you said mm-hmm. and more of your work keep it right here on 95 and 9 touch fm tfm hip-hop show with me so severe yuri will be back and we'll be hearing more of his work in just a break eminem with dear stan